Do you put artificial sweeteners in your coffee or in your sweet tea? Do you use the pink packet, the blue packet, the yellow packet, or the white packet? And are you using those as a replacement for sugar because you want to avoid obesity, diabetes, and insulin resistance? Well, if so, I recently made a video showing how using artificial sweeteners is not helping you prevent those things and is actually moving you further towards those things. Today I want to dive into why that's happening. Last video we talked about the neurologic impact of them. This video we want to dive into the impact on your gut microbiome or on your probiotics or gut bacteria. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. Artificial sweeteners promote obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. In our last video, we discussed how they do this by disrupting the neurology of eating and the neurology of the GI tract associated with sugar versus artificial sweeteners. So check that video out. In this video, we're going to discuss how artificial sweeteners promote obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes by disrupting your gut microbiome. In other words, by changing your gut bacteria from a good profile to one that is pro-inflammatory and promotional of those diseases. And our artificial sweetener of choice for discussion today is sucralose because sucralose is the most broadly used artificial sweetener out there and sucralose is found in Splenda. So we want to first look at mice studies because the studies on this topic began in mice and then moved to humans. So to understand this, let's work with mice first and then move to humans for application. On the board here, I have NAS, which stands for non-caloric artificial sweetener. And what the researchers did was they wanted to say, does sucralose disrupt the gut microbiome in mice and lead to glucose intolerance or blood sugar dysregulation? So what they did was they put sucralose in mice water for six weeks and then observed for changes in the gut microbiome and for changes in genetic expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines or chemicals or, or substances in the body. So we have non-caloric artificial sweetener plus a mouse and in a mouse with good healthy gut microbiome or microbiota we have a glucose tolerance curve that looks like this, or normal, okay? So in a mouse, given artificial sweetener on the short term, it's not going to disrupt the microbiome much, and they're going to tolerate uh, the artificial sweetener and not have glucose changes. But over the long term, being six weeks in this study, when you gave a non-caloric artificial sweetener to a mouse, over that time, their microbiome or the bacteria that made up their gut, their microbiota, were changed to bad bugs. And when you change the bad bugs, that resulted in more intestinal permeability and more pro-inflammatory metabolites and mo more pro-inflammatory cytokines, which led to more liver inflammation and led to a poorer glucose response or more glucose intolerance. So the glucose tolerance curve looked like that, and that's a bad curve. That meant that the mice were not tolerating or dealing with their blood sugar properly or optimally, which is promotional of obesity, of insulin resistance, of type 2 diabetes. Now the researchers wanted to know, well, is the change was the change in the microbiome the cause of the glucose tolerance or the glucose intolerance so what they did was they then added antibiotics to the equation to these mice and when they added the antibiotics the glucose tolerance curve again looked like the blue line so what that told the researchers is, hey, the microbiome, the change in the microbiome directly impacted the glucose tolerance or led to the glucose intolerance. 
as proven by, hey, let's use antibiotics, wipe out the bad guys, reestablish good guys, and we reestablish proper glucose tolerance. That's pretty awesome. Another way they wanted to prove it was they said, well, what if we take mice with bad microbiota and implant those mice or, excuse me, transplant those bugs into germ-free mice or sterile mice? So they had mice with no bugs inside them and they took bad bugs from other mice and transplanted those bad bugs in the sterile mice. The sterile mice went from good glucose tolerance to the purple glucose intolerance curve. So another strong piece of evidence that it's the bugs and the makeup of your gut microbiome directly influences your ability to regulate your blood sugar. Now this is all great, but I'm sure the person watching this is not a mouse unless Mickey's watching. So we want to know, hey, how does this equate to human physiology? Well, studies in humans have shown similar results. So if we take a human and we add a non-caloric artificial sweetener, and if this human has good bugs, then what happens is our glucose tolerance curve looks like that. It looks good. The caveat is that the good bugs make this person a non, what's called a, uh, or a, a good responder. So even though we're adding a toxin in there, at least in the short term when you have a good microbiome, they are a good responder, meaning they can properly manage their glucose tolerance. But if you add the artificial sweetener to a human being that has bad bugs, They, and or is a poor responder, then they're going to have a glucose intolerance curve. And that person is going to have obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes promoted physiologically in them by the non-caloric artificial sweeteners, by the sucralose, by the Splenda, by the other brands they're consuming. And also the research has shown that these, these artificial sweeteners increase pro-inflammatory expression inside the bodies of the hosts, meaning pro-inflammatory pathways are driven up, which again is leading to this metabolic dysfunction and contributing to the insulin resistance and diabetes and obesity. What specific markers were driven up? Well, matrix metalloproteinase was driven up and quinolinic acid was driven up. Matrix metalloproteinase destroys tissue or choose through tissue, and quinolinic acid is neurotoxic. So these things can be toxic to more than just your gut and more than just your blood sugar regulation. It can result in cognitive changes and neurophysiologic changes as we covered in the last video. So again, we wanna bring home the point that if you are intending and properly intending to try to avoid obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes, by cutting out sugar and adding artificial sweeteners. Unfortunately, what the data is showing is that although your intention is good, the application is not. So adding artificial sweeteners in the place of sugar is not helping you prevent obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes, and is actually promoting it and may be leading to other disease mechanisms and issues by driving up pro-inflammatory state inside your body and those pro-inflammatory cytokines can lead to other organs like brain, like kidneys, covered in the last video, also being dysfunctional. So stick with whole food, natural food. You still want to minimize the sugar and stick to natural sugars from fruits and vegetables and starches and tubers that are allowed on a specific diet that is right for you. And working with a functional medicine provider that can take the diet and nutrition side of your case and look at the underlying physiology of your case and with your symptoms and put that whole web together to create the perfect plan for you is the way to achieve a life at optimal.